So a little bit of fun fact while I was getting the Fanatec off my rig and the Mazda Racing one set up. Um, none of the holes on my NRG Innovations base fit the Mazda Racing base. But what I did find out, and this is kind of a, an awesome thing, my Fanatec angled base lines up exactly with the back two holes of the Mazda uh, Sim Racing base. So we're going to be using the Fanatec riser and angle plate which will put it to where I want it to be, you know, for my base setup, but it will only use two holes. So I may have to drill two more holes in here if I want, but the Fanatec base does fit for the angle bracket, does fit on the Mazda Racing from the Club Sports. So fun little fact. So we're gonna continue to get this thing installed on the rig so we can get this thing ripping. the app up and it does say wheelbase active i feel like we need to calibrate this because i feel like this is not centered so we're going to hook the wheel on we got some nice actual tracking of lights we're going to activate the wheel and we're going to do finish now i think so i want to center this and i think we click center on this yep there we go now we're centered and there we have rotation. It's set, looks like it's only 360. Okay, so there's a lot of movement and a lot of change, 900 degrees. Yep, that's way more. So it's kind of very sweet that it's just easily set up. It's noticing, it's recognizing everything as it, on the screen. So everything is working and correct. So game feedback for the R9, it shows, oh man. So there's so many different options. GT, rally, performance, formula, cart. There's a drift option. Uh, there is a drift option on here. And it does full force feedback and equalizing and you can adjust everything. So there is a drift setting in here. And then a GT setting, which, yep. So it limits, it makes it a lot less. So that's actually very intriguing. So if you can, if you're noticing, so on GT setting, it actually only goes that far before it hits a soft lock that far before it hits a soft lock then if we go drift there's way more huh that's and then cart is probably very little yep that's a cart feel performance it's got some really heavy resistance on the performance aspect and then rally very loose and very tight steering formula is even tighter steering and it has presets for everything like that so we're going to click on the drift one because well actually we're going to go gt because we're probably going to it does activate the horn button does work oh yes let's go back to taking a look at this the horn button actually activates that is super cool we don't have a display Let's go back to the wheel and it's the axis split. There's so much lead, normal, late, custom. We're going to leave that on normal. So, yeah, you can just. Oh, and here's all our different color options. So, you can change everything to say red, 
for the last three. And then if I want to do blue and green, you can adjust the brightness of it too. That is awesome. So we're going to see how this is. And also it shows that there's, you got you can configure different games. So that's actually super intriguing to me that it does configure that way. We're going to make sure we get to our speakers because we're going to take this and kind of do a first little, uh, I would guess, impressions on it and see where we're at because this is actually, uh, I like all the profile settings because I know we have the app. So let's see if we can actually get the app to work. Because I was talking about this before. So we're opening up the Mazda Racing app. And you can see right there, it says R9. So we're going to go connect the device um, when using the app. Okay, allow. So it is pulling up my R9. So I'm going to click connect. Super simple on that one. Error, check the Bluetooth is turned on or try again. Oh, well. Actually, I probably should have uh, searched it. So I may have to actually somehow turn on Bluetooth or something like that on this. Because I'm not sure if this is actually... Oh, it is confirmed. There we go. Now I just confirmed it. Steering wheel normal. Screen not detected. Enter car. So I can literally, I think, switch it to drift mode from my phone. And it just did that. And then we can go. We'll go to cart mode because that's a big change. It recenters my wheel and makes it. So you can do all of this. GT racing mode right up there. You can change your force feedback. You can change everything just via the phone. You can even adjust your, your timing for your lights and everything like that. If you need to, oh, I didn't want to do that. Uh, you go back up. We're going to, uh, confirm reset parameters. There we go. So reset all the parameters. No, <laughs> keep it in the wrong button. We're resetting all the parameters. And we're just going to... So you can do presets. Save preset. Preset library. So you can have presets for, say, personal drivers and things like that. Like I was talking about when I first took a look at the, at the wheel. So let's go ahead and go back to the main screen and I want to make sure we're going to go GT and then we're going to go back here so it says it's at 80% force feedback that might be really high we're going to launch competitive zone so we're going to go into options let's see if everything is just automatically connected steering is not so we do need to rebind our controls for our wheel so shift up shift down so that does work pit limiter we're gonna do that one uh, we're just do cycle wipers up top next dash up top increase traction control decrease oh no uh, decrease. Okay, so I need to. That's decrease. And that's increase. Okay, so increase and decrease on the toggle. Okay. Uh, light cycle. Could do that one for now. Enable rain lights. Cycle camera, look left, 
and we can use our glance buttons, which is really awesome. So we're going to leave all of that for right now, but now we need to get... There it is. Mazda R9 is calibrated now. So we are good on that aspect. We got our R9 calibrated just by doing that. And we're going to go back again and we're going to do a practice session. We do have the BMW M4 GT3 uh, set up. So we do... Where did my phone go? So we do have the app on. Um, and we are still connected to... We are still connected to the wheel. So we have everything. I'm going to put the brightness up for the lights at 100. Uh, I'm not sure what one and two mode, mode one and mode two are, but we're going to figure that out. We're going to keep the app up so that if we want to make some sort of adjustments, we can. So we're going to start the session. And we're going to go straight to setup. We're going to do our aggressive setup, and we're going to set our brake bias how I like it. And we're going to go back. So this could be the first initial test with the with the R9 base on GT setting in the app. So the app is set up in that, so we're just going to click drive. we got to make sure get our ignition turned on. And right off the rip, the lights work super cool. So now I want to see what the actual two mode is. So we're going to click mode two. Oh, so mode two that tracks and then when it gets to red line, the whole bar flashes red. And then mode one, the whole, oh, that's super cool. All right, we're going to do mode two where it, it tracks blue and then the whole light flashes so the fact that i can just change it on my phone without exiting the game is amazing we can me change parameters and everything like that so that is super awesome and super cool so now that we're started up we're gonna get our gloves on um because we want to keep the new rim nice and clean so we're gonna get our gloves on and we're gonna go for our first initial drive we have our glance left and right and our back. So we got our pit limiter button. Works right away. It's so the first initial drive with the new R9 wheelbase and the RS racing wheel. Super excited for this. The feedback off the rip feels really good for their basic settings. All that light is so cool. So, Mazda Gunaseka is a track that I know, so it, it, we should be able to get a good feel uh, feel of it initially. And dial up track control a little bit. And first initial feel of this wheel um, is there's a lot more road feel, I'm noticing, uh, off the rip from my club sport. Uh, and that could be, you know, the fact that they have a GT setting in this, I, like right there, I felt the wheels, the, the base started chattering a little bit because it was a lockup. So, things that I probably didn't really notice as much on my club sport, and I can definitely tell it's almost a one to one for my steering. That's actually really awesome. Oh, that was a late break. Yep, I could feel the vibration through the base because of a lockup of wheels. That was a really bad. Um, bad break but what I like so much about this is those lights are super nice they're super bright and the fact that you can adjust all of that how you want is by far awesome now I think I have it set to normal and I think they're coming on way sooner than they should yeah so I can set it to come on later or percentage of everything which is what's really cool And overall feedback from just their basic profile. Um, whoa, <laughs> little bit, little bit squirrely there. Their basic profile feels really good, and 
fine tuning this is going to make this thing feel so much better. And I cannot wait to get, you know, behind the wheel of a drift car and see how this thing works in drift mode because it does have a drift mode in their settings. So they already have parameters set up for drifting. So definitely very curious to see what their drift mode is going to be like. Um, and if, you know, I can make some tweaks and, you know, get it to feel how even better. We'll flash the pass there. We have our light controls. So, with my Fantasec pedals being able to be separated ooh, from my base, I'm able to run my Fantasec pedals right now. And my handbrake works too, but my shifter doesn't. I would need to get a USB adapter for my shifter. But overall, first impressions, so excited about this wheel. It feels super amazing out of the box right now. And you know, I haven't even gotten into fully fine tuning it myself. But like just the, the fact that the light on top is something that like I'm going to utilize in all my parameters because you guys know I have a stream deck on the outside for like parameters and I love my outside parameters that I get to look at and watch and you know they get immersion in this you know hopefully whoa okay settle down there car might be moving into three screens soon and doing the triples but I do have my VR but having these lights you couldn't enjoy them in VR. If you notice, I'm just switching between driving cameras as I'm driving to give you guys a full view of the rim and everything. So, definitely super excited about this base. It feels so much nicer and a little, I feel like a little more precise. I, I just, you know, going to be driving a lot more, going to be doing some more comparison with my club sport and then also going to be hooking up with my buddy Charles who you guys know was in that 12 hour race we did at Sebring he has a CSL DD so we're going to definitely do a comparison between the DD and this Mazda R9 because I feel like these those two are on the same parameters and it would be good to you know just compare the two I feel so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to keep seeing more, let me know down in the comment section down below. Definitely, uh, once again, a big thank you to Mazda Racing for making this possible and becoming a new partner to the channel and myself. Definitely feels super nice. I, I'm, I'm noticing a lot of different road feel, different precision in this, out of this direct drive from my club sport so as always i thank you guys for coming back and watching make sure you follow me on all social media all the description box below make sure you check out mazda racing everything will be in the description box below for them and as always i thank you guys for coming back and watching i'm evil rabbit i'll see you guys on the track